Okay, so here's the deal. I just moved into a new flat, which is very exciting, and clearly I have begun to decorate. But I recently organized all of my sewing stuff, and then I promptly moved two months later. So it's a little bit of a problem because now I don't have quite as much space. It's, it's quite a small um, studio, so I don't have a whole lot of space. All of my, like, big bits of fabric are currently in a plastic bag in my closet, which is not ideal, but there's literally nowhere else for them. And the rest of my sewing stuff is in a little cabinet. So I figured since I've just moved, this would be a really great time to get rid of some cabbage. What I'm planning to do is this is all like the, the bigger bits of fabric. And then I've got like literal scraps. I have a couple projects in mind because I've also, I haven't sewn in a while. And so I figured this would be a good time to kind of get back into it and do some like small projects just to just to start back off. I do want to make a, a little pin cushion for myself because my current one is just it's it came with my sewing kit and I don't like it very much. Like it's fine. Nobody looks at your pin cushion, but I figured it would be nice to make my own with like some pretty fabric from here. Because I saw Loopsy do do one and I really liked the way that hers turned out. So I would like to try my own and we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna use some of this stuff as stuffing because it's literally just scraps. So I might as well just cut it up and see if if I can use it as stuffing. I think it should be fine. Like I think if I cut it up small enough, it, that should be fine for a pin cushion. It'll just be kind of like lumpy. It won't be as nice as like a polyfill one. Is that what it's called? Polyfill? I'm. I'm not actually sure. Anyway, so pin cushion, that's number one. Second, I have recently acquired a lot of skirts that I thrifted and blasphemously, is that a word? Blasphemously, a word? Blasphemously, none of them have pockets and they also all have side zippers. I kind of hate side zippers. I don't, I don't know if anybody else hates side zippers. Listen, all of my skirts need to have at least one giant pocket. So I'm gonna work on that today. Again, using some of the, the bigger scraps, I think I can make some good pockets out of that. I don't know where I put my pocket pattern. That was a lot of peas. I think I have a pocket pattern and if I don't, I will be drafting one. Pin cushion, pockets, and then I was thinking that I might make some like, I, I know there are those things called like unpaper towels. I guess you could just use regular towels, but I kind of want something like smaller ones that I can just grab just to like clean up spills or whatever. Cause funnily enough, I have spilled a lot of tea in my kitchen lately. Not in a gossipy way, just literally I have spilled tea everywhere because I make my tea in a pot on the stove and my pot does not have a spout. And so I spill tea every morning when I make tea. It's not actually that weird that I make tea in a pot on the stove. That's how that's how you make chai, generally, because you have to like boil it with all the spices and the tea leaves. None of this is important. So I'm thinking I might make some of those, which I'm, I'm literally just gonna like sandwich two pieces of fabric together, because that I think should be absorbent enough to just like clean up little spills and that sort of thing, and then I can just toss it in the wash. So that'll be really convenient. I don't know if I'm gonna get all of that done today. It is currently a quarter past five. So I don't think I'll get it all done today, but I think I can do the pin cushion today and I might be able to at least draft the pocket pattern. So we'll see, let's just get started. Okay, hi, voiceover Rajali here. This is my first time doing this on YouTube, so hey. So I started off with this purple fabric and then proceeded to use every writing implement I own to try and get this circle to show up. It ended up needing to be a Sharpie. And then I went ahead and cut that out. I ran a gathering stitch all around the edge and then I scrunched it up to make it easy to stuff. And then I started cutting up my scraps. This was a lot of fun. It was also very painful until I realized I should maybe be a little bit less ambitious with how much I was cutting at a time. So uh, once I deflated my head, that went a lot faster. So then I actually tried stuffing the casing I'd just made and it was at this point that I realized the circle was too small and that the pins would in fact stab me. Well done me. I didn't have enough of the purple left, so I repeated the whole process with this music note fabric. I mean, I actually really love how it turned out, so I guess it wasn't that much of a problem. So yeah, cut out a bigger circle, ran a gathering stitch along the edge. Uh, by the way, this footage isn't sped up. I was just so irritated by having to do this twice that I somehow unlocked super speed. Anyway, at least the circle was big enough this time. I ended up using all the stuffing I'd cut, but it didn't feel like it was full enough, so I had to cut more. Pro tip, cutting it like this is a great way to get tiny threads all over you and not realize it because you were wearing a dark colored skirt. This was fun to clean up later. So once it finally felt full enough, I pulled on the gathering string to tighten the pouch and then I basically tacked down all those gathers as best as I could. I knew the strap was gonna cover this later so I didn't worry too much about the raw edges. 
Speaking of the strap, I measured around my wrist and then I cut out a bit of fabric that was that long and as wide as I could make it from whatever was left of that scrap. And then I folded that into quarters and stitched all along the edge to make a sturdy strap. I think I realized at some point that I'd cut the strap too short and it wasn't gonna overlap. So I stitched a bit of elastic into one end so that I could do a button loop instead of a buttonhole. And then obviously I sewed a button on the other end. And then I just stitched that strap down to the pin cushion. And finally, I filled that bad boy up with pins. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I've just finished the pin cushion. I just transferred over all of my pins from this one. It took forever, but I like this one a lot better and I can keep it on my wrist, which um, that's the only thing I would change about it is I would make the strap either a bit longer so I could have like a snap on it or something, um, or I would just do the whole thing with elastic because this is not the easiest to put on, but I'm not gonna redo it because I'm lazy and stubborn. So, hold on, let's see how long it actually takes me to put this on. There we go. That's pretty nice, actually. This will be great when I'm using my sewing machine because I kind of just tend to like leave the pins to the side of the machine and then occasionally when I'm sewing on the floor and I miss a pin, and then I step on the pin. It's not fun. Anyway, this was fun and it's gonna be useful, so yay! Used up some scraps. Hello, it is day two of this project now. I could not find my pocket pattern anywhere, so I'm gonna draft one real quick. So I'm gonna use Bertha Banner's pocket pattern. This entire book is on Google Books, so I can link that down below. I think I'm gonna do the, um, the bag-shaped pocket because I just like the shape of that one better. I've done both in different things and in most of my dresses I've used the bag-shaped one and I, I like that one. So let me draft that real quick and I will show you. Psych, I'm not gonna show you. I mean, I could, but the pattern is really easy to follow and it's basically a big trapezoid, so it would be pretty boring to watch me explain all of that. Okay, so this is the pocket. This is 12 inches across. This is an entire foot across. So this bit here, this is a Victorian pocket, so you would have a bit of tape that would connect to the waistband. This bit is the bit that actually attaches to the skirt. And all of this is pocket. So I'm trying to remember if I actually wanted it to be this big, because this is, I, I love a big pocket, don't get me wrong, but this is a lot. And I'm not actually sure I have that much scrap fabric. Well, let me see how much scrap fabric I have, hold on. Right, okay, well, I do have quite a lot of this fabric. And this is still like a scrap. I don't know what else I would do with this except make pockets. So I could probably make, if I was gonna make the pockets this big, actually, I think I could make two. And so because most of these skirts that I'm putting pockets in have side zippers, um, I'm going to only make one pocket for each skirt, which is disappointing, but I suppose if it's a big pocket. So I might actually make the pockets full size because then I can have really big pockets in my skirts. So I can make two out of this. And then for the last one, I will find another bit of fabric. Let me see. I have found it, so I have one more. So this is all just scrap fabric. There's a lot of good fabric that I can just make pockets out of. So amazing. I will make them full size then, and I will put them into those three skirts. So I only need three pockets. Unfortunately, I wore one of the skirts yesterday because I did not think this through, as usual. I'll probably do that one off camera when I get the chance, and then I'll, I'll do the other two now. So see if we can get this done. Okay, so the way she wants us to do this is that this bit is on the fold. I actually kind of prefer to put the fold at the bottom because then obviously that seam's not gonna rip when you put stuff in it. Um, these seams might rip if you sew them badly, which I often do, but I haven't had a pocket rip yet. So I might put the seam on this side also because um, this piece of fabric is kind of long and skinny. So I think it will work perfectly if I put the fold there. Let me cut this out real quick and then I will cut out all the pocket pieces and I think I'm gonna French seam them and then we will worry about this seam later when we actually put it into the skirt. the most glorious of pockets. So I went ahead and pinned down the pattern and then I cut it out. And then to French seam it, I put the wrong sides together, sewed down those side seams and then flipped it inside out and sewed the seams again, making sure those raw edges are inside the second seam. There are people who explain this much better than me, so I will link a tutorial down below. 
Okay, so Bertha Banner now says that we put in the pocket about three to four inches below the waistband. So we mark the top there. And then the slit of the pocket, the, uh, the slanted bit that actually goes into the, the seam here is about six inches. So I'm gonna mark that too. Yep, that's just about right. Good, so, so what I'm gonna do first is um, overcast this because when I open up this seam, I obviously don't want the whole thing to unravel. So I'm just gonna open up the bit between the pins and then I will show you how I will insert the pocket. This is how I was sitting at the beginning of the seam ripping process. And this is what I looked like at the end. It took a while. Right, I've been sitting here puzzling over how to insert this pocket for the last five minutes, so I figure I might as well try and figure this out on camera and talk it out loud. I imagine it's a bit like setting in a sleeve, so if I turn this inside out now, the whole thing goes through the slit in the skirt. Here's the opening, and here's the slit, and I sew it here and here, and then I would have all the raw edges to, to worry about. I think I can maybe either overcast it or fell them down which if I fell it down, it's gonna be a very, very narrow seam just because um, I want this to follow the seam that the skirt originally had, which obviously was quite a bit smaller than you would normally do it. Unless I tried to French seam it, but I have never French seamed anything like this. And I'm not entirely sure how you would do that. So let me, let me think this through. Okay, I've been trying to figure out how to French seam this for like 10 minutes and it, it's not happening. I don't know how to French seam it. So I'm just gonna sew it. I'll sew it as much along this original seam as I can because I, I obviously don't want it to look out of place. I want this pocket to be pretty hidden. And then we'll see if I can fell it afterwards. And if I can't, I will just overcast it and not care. So that is fine. So I have pinned all around the pocket opening. And now hopefully when it's all sewn and I turn this back the right way, or rather inside, I don't know, you know, with the, with the seams on the inside of the skirt as they are supposed to be, then I'll just have all these raw edges. And also this little bit here, which uh, Bertha Banner says is supposed to turn into a box pleat. And then normally you would have a tape that goes up to the waistband, but actually it's got this hanging strap that I don't really need. Um, so I might literally just put that in there like that and make my life a little bit easier by not having to use a bit of tape. So let's see how this goes. Right, so I was gonna do this by machine, but then I was a coward and did a backstitch by hand instead. If you can sew this by machine, I applaud you. You are a braver soul than I. Okay, wait, now that I've actually sewn it in, I think I figured it out. So I've got the pocket in. This is now the inside of the skirt. And I am realizing that from the outside, you can kind of see the different fabric. And so I thought, okay, well, I could just understitch it. But then I realized that if I just stitch along here, not only will that um, keep the, the different colored fabric like on the inside, it'll make this seem nice and neat. But if I stitch far enough in, that will also cover up all the raw edges. So no ever casting required. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to French seam it, but it seems like it'll work. So I'm not gonna question it. I'm just gonna kind of go with it. So I've turned the skirt the right way. And now from the outside, I'll stitch along here to make sure that all the raw seams are, are hidden. And from the outside, you will see a little bit of the stitching, but actually the skirt needs to be altered a bit because it's um, the, the waist is just a little bit too big. So what I was gonna do anyway was do that. And then this whole seam will kind of be like hidden in this fold, which you know is, is not the neatest, but that's the only way it'll fit me. And I'm not gonna unpick the entire waistband and like reseam the skirt because this obviously I thrifted it. So um, it's not like I made it myself. And even if the stitching is seen, it'll just be like along the pocket like that. So. I'm not worried about it. That makes my life a lot easier because I don't have to fix the inside now. So I just sewed that down with a small running stitch and I managed to do it along the check so you really can't see it in the final skirt. So I finished the outside and I'll show you in a minute. I'm just gonna take this bit now and sort of there's raw edges here still so I'm just gonna fold that over, tuck that in, and then fold this over and just tack this down. And hopefully that should help suspend the weight of the uh, of the pocket from the waistband so that it doesn't make the whole thing askew, I suppose. So I'll just sew that down real quick. Here is the pocket. I mean, it's huge. Like you can see how far my arm goes down into it. With the, the altering, yeah, this bit sticks out a little bit, but I feel like you wouldn't really know if you weren't looking for it. You can see a little bit of the, the fabric still, which there's not much I can do about that. If I had like some some of this fabric to face it with and you know then I would but ultimately this is supposed to be functional and it is very functional I'm 
extremely happy with how big this pocket is. I love giant pockets. <laughs> Another success. Two for two. Let's, um, we'll have to see if my, my paper towel idea works. I don't know how to hold this phone, actually. It's right in front of my face. Perfect. I'm really good at YouTube. I will see how the paper towels go, but I think I'm going to call it for today. I don't know where to look. Do I look at the lens? I don't. Anyway, see you next time, which will be in like three seconds. Okay, bye. Day three of this project and I am on the last one, which is making some paper towels or unpaper towels, fabric, to not towels, they're thin. We're making towels. Yeah, I'm literally just gonna take, this is just some plain leftover cotton. I'm just gonna sandwich two pieces together and that'll just, you know, it'll be something thin that I can just wipe up spills with. So pretty easy. I'm probably gonna make like two right now. I might make more later, but um, I just wanna see how they work. I will, uh, I, <laughs> I already spilled something this morning, so I will test it on that. Let's get started. So I just kind of eyeballed how big I wanted these to be, mostly based on me just wanting to use up all this pink fabric. Pinned those right sides together, made sure to mark a two inch gap and sewed all around the edges. And then I clipped the corners and turned it inside out from the gap I'd left. And then you could probably just slip stitch this close, but I wanted a little bit of a neater finish, so I top stitched all around the edges instead. This is a little trick I picked up from quilting. If you start in the middle of the side and then you finish really carefully and make sure you end in the same place, then you can pull all the threads to the back and knot them off there. And then you pull all those threads back through a needle and bury them in the seam. I found that that gives a really seamless finish to top stitched things. So that was pretty quick. That took me like probably 10 minutes to make one of them. Um, I will probably make more off camera, but I wanted to test this one out first. So let's see how it goes. Clearly I need to clean my stove top, but I spilled a bit of water um, when I was making my tea earlier. So let's just... I mean, yeah, it's pretty absorbent. Um, I reckon if I pre-wash it, it'll be a little bit more absorbent because none of this fabric was pre-washed, I don't think. Still, that's that's pretty good and it does the job of a paper towel and I can just clean all this up and I am going to now use this to clean my stove top because this is disgusting and I'm so sorry you have to see this. Okay, wow, yeah, that actually worked really well. I am impressed. And I actually just wrung this out. Well, rinsed it and then wrung it out and then used it again. Which, you know, if you do that with a paper towel, it will, you know, start to tear apart. And reusable, which, yay, we love environmentally friendly things. That did a really good job. I'm actually really impressed. I didn't even need, like, any um, oven cleaner or anything. I might rinse it again, let it dry a bit, and then toss it in my laundry just so that it's not, like, you know, wet and stinking in my laundry because I'm not doing laundry for another couple of days. Well, all in all, I think I'm pretty pleased with how these three sewing projects have, have worked out. I mean, I've been using this pin cushion for the last two days, which has been really useful, and I have not lost a single pin since I started using this two days ago, which for me is impressive. Obviously the pockets are gonna be super useful. I'm very excited to, to put them into my other skirts. And the paper towel worked out really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple more of those as soon as I turn off the camera. So good, I'm very excited now to, now that I've gotten like back in the groove of sewing and I have some time, I'm very excited to start on some some new projects. I've got a whole list going and I just don't know what to do first. There is a big one that I've been procrastinating on that I kind of talked about in the last video, but. I'll get to it. I just, I feel like I'm still quite a beginner sewer or sewist. Never know what to say. But I think this was really fun and it was a great way to use up some scraps and all of those projects were really easy. You could hand sew them if you wanted to. I'm pretty happy with all how all this turned out. So thank you so much for watching. The things I do for the thumbnails. What? <laughs>